G'day and welcome to Mr. Craftsmith, I'm Darren. And in this video, hopefully by the end of it, we'll have a much better idea on how we can engrave photos directly onto wood. So the timber that we're gonna be using today is a plywood and this particular plywood is poplar. So it's um, not popular, it's poplar. And um, it's a very light colored timber because I thought that would be a pretty good starting point for me uh, with engraving photos onto timber. Um, I've seen a lot of other guys use much darker timbers and things like that and I just think that makes it a little bit harder. So uh, we're gonna give it a crack today on the poplar and see how it goes. I'm a little bit anxious because I'm pretty certain it's, it's not gonna respond the same way as say slate or uh, the Norton White tile methods, the ceramic tile methods that we've done in the past couple of videos. I'll pop links for those down in the uh, description if you wanna go back and have a look at those for reference as well. But the first thing that we need to be doing is setting up the uh, some material testing. So it's very important that I've found, like, and again, I've only been doing this for a few months, but um, it's very important to test the material that you're gonna be using before you actually start doing any sort of serious engraving or anything like that. So we're gonna get that set up and do a material test on the uh, poplar and have a look at the results and see what they look like. So I have shown this in previous videos, but I just wanna quickly run over it again for you. And we're just gonna pop up to laser tools and we're gonna do a material test. And this is something that I recommend for every material that you're gonna be using. I'm gonna do a five by five grid. And we're gonna be starting that one at 2000, cause I did one, uh, my first one that I did, I started off just guessing basically where it needed to be. And it was way too slow. So we're gonna go from 2000 to 6000 millimeters per minute and we're going to be going from 10% through to 30%. And if we want to preview that one, that's exactly what it's going to do. And um, it's going to fill all those little boxes at those variable speeds and percentage of power. And that will give us an indication as to how or what the best settings are going to be for us to use to get the best possible engraving outcome. So we've done some material testing here and uh, this is just a scrap piece of uh, poplar that I had there. And I've done a couple of different tests. So the first test that I've done is, um, if I pop that up the right way, is the, um, is the burn test essentially to see what my optimal settings are to uh, get the, the best sort of engraving without losing too much uh, material. Because if, if you can look down here and I'll pop a a uh, picture of this up on the um, screen as well. But as we get into these other um, stronger burns, we're taking out a lot of material and I don't necessarily want that. This is more just a surface engrave and uh, I'm, I'm not expecting a black uh, finish by any means because it's wood and I'm not treating this with borax or baking soda or anything like that. So uh, that might be for another video. Now the second test that we're doing is the uh, well, I, I call it the grayscale test, but um, you know, it was pointed out to me that you know, with the diode lasers, we don't really have the ability to do grayscale per se, uh, but what we do have the ability to do is test a dither pattern. And a dither pattern is just a series of dots essentially, so, and it's the, um, the density of those dots that will actually simulate uh, this grayscale that we've actually produced here. Now I processed this in um, ImageR, which is a um, online software. I've got the offline version uh, to prepare this file ready. And, uh, and I've done this in the past with the other uh, tests as well with the slate and the, and the um, ceramic tiles. And what we found is that, or what we're trying to establish is the, the effective dynamic range, I guess, of the laser. And in this case, what I can see here, I've done two burn tests here. Um, and the, uh, the grayscale test, I should say, and at 52.50 uh, and 35%, which I thought was the optimum setting, I was getting around about 85% um, of dynamic range in our black levels. Beyond 85%, it all just looks the same. So that's how we can determine what levels that we need to be outputting from our image so as we don't actually um, just get a big black uh, or black or brown in this case mess of, uh, of an image. 
And then I thought I'd also try it at a different speed uh, to see and slow it down. So it would effectively give me, I guess, more of a burn. And you can see there quite clearly that uh, that was actually down to 80%. So uh, it really is important to just optimize that setting so that it's giving you the, the maximum dynamic range within your engrave. So, uh, and if we look down the bottom end here, between zero and 5%, there isn't really sort of much difference for our white point. And uh, so we'll make those adjustments uh, as accordingly in image R. But uh, yeah, so we did establish that through these burn tests, that um, our optimal setting was 5,250 millimeters per minute, and that was at 35% power level. So next step, we'll get the image ready and, uh, and go from there. So this is the image that we're gonna be working with today. It's an image I took a few years ago on one of our local beaches here on the Sunshine Coast, an absolutely beautiful spot. I'm happy to point you in the right direction if you're ever over this way. So the first step in the process is to convert this to a black and white image. Now I am going to be using Photoshop in this example and I understand that not everyone has access to Photoshop but it helps me explain the process because I've been using Photoshop for quite a few years and you should be able to convert this to whatever image editor that you're actually using. So I'm going to apply an adjustment layer here and I'm just going to do a black and white adjustment layer. So that instantly turns it black and white. The good thing with this filter is that I'm able to adjust the underlying colors and make those appear darker or lighter within the actual black and white image. So as an example, I can select this pointer and I'm gonna look at the sky. So I want a little bit more detail in the sky. So if I can just click and drag, you can see that my sky is now, the blue portion of the sky is getting darker. Okay, so that will give me a little bit more detail. And if I just turn that layer off, it doesn't affect the underlying image. It's just adjusting the black and white image that we're going to be engraving. The other thing that I might want to do is just maybe darken up the uh, sand a little bit um, and, the, and the grass. So if I just click and drag, that just gives me a little bit more detail and it actually just makes it pop a little bit more, which should hopefully translate to a better engraving in the final image. Now I've purposely picked this image with a black dog because it does have the potential to be a pretty ordinary engraving if we don't get our levels correct. And we've established with our testing that our effective dynamic range on the poplar plywood, we're getting around about 80% black before we lose before we lose any further sort of definition between the ranges. And we're getting between zero and 5% black levels for the bottom end. So understanding that the brightest part of the image, there's not gonna be any sort of dither pattern at all, right through to our dark colors here in the coat. Uh, if, if I was to put that at 100% black and, and assuming the full dynamic range, a lot of these other values in here as well, where it's not quite black, they're gonna come up the same because we couldn't actually differentiate the difference. So let's go to our output levels now. And if we jump into our levels, we've got here an adjustment level called levels and the output levels, what I'm gonna do is set that. So if we look at our spreadsheet, we got 80% black, which corresponds to 51 in the black levels. So I'm gonna just adjust that output levels to 51. And on the top end, we were sitting between zero and 5%. So I'm gonna just round that off to 245. So rather than the full 255, let's just drop it back to 245. So that now should replicate the dynamic range that we have when we are using the um, optimum settings on the poplar plywood. So all I need to do now is save that file and then we're going to jump into image R and process that ready for the engraving. So I've brought that image into image R and I'm using the offline version just simply because I think it suits my workflow pretty well. So I'm not gonna crop it. I don't, I'll, I'll, we'll just do the full engraving and just see what it looks like. 
And if we go to a resize, I'm going to change this to 254. And let's make this one 200 millimeters. So that's 20 centimeters wide at 254. So let's have a look at that one. Okay. Next thing we're going to do is go to our material. So I'm using a diode laser. And if we have a look what we've got here, we've got Norton wood. Now I haven't tested this before, so we'll just see how that goes. So you, you can see the dog there, like, and we're just looking at a side-by-side -side comparison. And it's, a, it's applying a dither pattern, which is just a series of dots to give us the different color grades uh, in that range from black to, through to white. So where you, you see the white, there's obviously not gonna be any dots. And the density of the dots determines the level of darkness that we're gonna see in our finished result. We're gonna apply some automatic sharpening to this one as well, just about 15 and apply that one. So that should bring out a little bit more detail, hopefully. And I'm not gonna adjust any contrast, brightness or gamma here because we've essentially done that uh, directly in our Photoshop itself. So let's have a preview and see what it might look like. And I'm just going to select poplar because that's the wood that I'm using, which is a lighter colored wood. And you can see there that there's, a, there's a quite a lot of darkness in there. So we're just going to see how it goes and um, give it a crack. We're just going to save that image. And there we go. Image has been saved. Let's head over to the engraver, laser engraver, and get that file set up. So let's take a look at the uh, engrave and see what it looks like. So I've just popped that on the back of this um, the material test that I did. So I'm using the same uh, piece of material. However, one thing I would sort of point out is that when you're buying the, um, the um, plywood, it generally, well, in, in this case, I, I had a look back and it has a, you know, a better side. So this is like the AA side, I guess. And then this is like the B side or the A or, or A class grading. So it's a slightly lower quality finish than the, um, the other side, but we're still sort of working fairly much apples with apples. But I'll pop a, a picture up on the screen to have a look at that one, a closer look at that one as well. And um, you can see there that there is certainly uh, a, a good range of um, shading there that we can sort of pick up with that um, image. And th there's detail there, but one thing that gets in the way, and I, I knew this was going to happen, is the grain of the timber. And it's always going to be the case with timber, I would imagine, no matter what type of timber you're working with, that uh, the grain is going to impact the uh, quality of the image. Um, because there may be you know, different sap woods involved, which might burn more than the, um, the core, core timber that may be used. And so you're going to have varying degrees. And I'll... Um, We'll have a look at that on another piece of um, uh, material as well, and because I've got one there that's got a couple of different grades of on the on the same surface, and we'll see what the difference is. But overall, it's it's okay. Like it's it is a black dog, and uh, it was never going to be easy to do a laser engrave on timber uh, of a black dog. But I think it's done pretty well given the circumstances. But it's certainly not what I would call my favorite substrate to work with uh, compared to the ceramic tile or the uh, the slate coasters. I'm going to run a couple more tests and uh, do uh, and make the prints a little bit smaller because this was nearly an hour to print but uh, and we're going to have a look at those um, results after we've printed those ones off. Rightio, so what I've done with this one is uh, we've I've gone ahead and I've pre finished the surface so I've sanded the surface uh, before I did the engrave and finished it to like a with a 400 grit orbital sander so it was nice and flat nice and smooth and you can see here very clearly and I'll pop it up on the screen as a photo that there are different timbers appearing within this one sheet or different grades of timbers so we've got the whiter timber and then on the bottom here we've you can see this little sort of mark I'll try and sort of outline it uh, where it's a, a different grade of timber and the the resulting burn you can see very clearly that it's it, it's just not usable it's not something that I would sort of be able to use uh, because of the different grades of timber within that same image and it's giving a really sort of poor result 
Now, but uh, besides that, what I've done here is I've done uh, two images in image R and I've done those using the same method, but using a different uh, lines per inch or DPI that they call it. So this image here on the right is at 300 DPI and the one on the, on the left is at 254. Now, the other thing that I wanted to try here was in the first image, I was using the grain. So I was actually printing across the grain. Uh, so the, the movement of the laser was going with the grain, I should say. So in this one, I wanted to just to sample it uh, using it going um, against the grain essentially or across the grain. And I, I would say that the end result is not quite as good as working with the grain. So that was just an interesting um, outcome. So as you can see here, this one is at 254. The original one was at 254 and it was a much darker burn so uh, and a much more consistent burn. So uh, I thought that was quite interesting. So um, I'm gonna go back to printing with the grain and do a couple of different settings here because these top two images were done using the Jarvis method directly in Lightburn and uh, using the adjusted image. So I'd already adjusted my image uh, output levels so as I know that I had the full dynamic range of uh, available within the engraving. And um, looking at those two there, I would say, now Jarvis is, you know, according to Lightburn, is the uh, the best setting for um, or high quality dither uh, in this case for you know the different shading so that's what I've used there and compared to the uh, image R because I have been asked this question before uh, why not just use light burn and um, I guess this is a fairly fairly convincing um, argument for me as to why I would use image R. Uh, is I wasn't really happy with uh, the definition, first of all, um, and the quality of the, um, the burn as well is not quite as, uh, as dark a burn. So um, I I'm sure that if I played around with the settings, I would be able to get much better results. But my um, initial thoughts on the, um, the Jarvis method is that uh, it doesn't really compare to the diode, uh, the diode setting in image R of the, um, the Norton Wood setting. So I think it gives a much better definition in as far as the final engrave. So we're gonna do this again. Let's go back with the grain and we'll make some other comparisons. Okay, so next sample. So these things take forever to burn. So uh, this has been a full day of testing for me. So um, Hopefully you, you're getting something out of this. If you are getting something out of it, give us a bit of a thumbs up, that'd be appreciated, just to know that I'm on the right track. But uh, so here's the, the next set of results. Now I've actually got a uh, photo on here as well that I did, because I thought, well, um, <clears throat> I wasn't uh, overly impressed, I guess you could say, with the uh, engraving with the, the black dog, and I knew it was always gonna be a risk and it was always gonna be hard to get a great result. But, um, but anyway, so what I've done, in these samples is I slowed it down because I thought, well, let's just slow it down a little bit and see if that made a bit of a difference with, uh, with uh, respect to the, um, the darkness of the burn and the detail with the, within the uh, burn as well. So I've done that at both 300 DPI and at 254 DPI. Again, I've gone back to that Jarvis method in uh, light burn directly at uh, 300 dpi and at 254 dpi and then using this uh, the radius and enhancement mode um, i saw something just briefly about that one so i thought i'd give that a try and and pop that one out as well and then once i'd sort of done those ones i thought well I, i'm losing definition again with that uh, slower burn rate because it's obviously burning more timber uh, so I popped it back to what I find, uh, what I believe is the best settings for me for this one, which is the Image R 300 DPI Norton Wood. And I'm doing that at 5250 uh, millimeters per minute and 35% power. So from my findings, that gave me the best results with the, um, with the engraving, the photo engraving. 
Uh, so your results will, will vary depending on the timber that you're using and uh, obviously the laser that you're using as well. So my recommendation, as I've said previously, is um, make sure you're doing the material test. It's so important to establish your baseline with the uh, with the material that you're working with and the laser that you're using. So because they're, they're not always going to transfer, you know, the, the settings that I'm using here may differ completely differently to someone else using the same laser uh, that might have a different batch of timber. So once I've, I've established that baseline and, and done all this testing to what I thought was probably the optimal settings for me, um, and I'm sure this can be tweaked further, but if, you know, I've spent a day on it and um, you know, over the next you know, coming weeks, I'll be doing some more testing as well. But um, I was pretty happy with how a, uh, the, the image turned out. This is a photo of my kids from when they were younger and um, I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, certainly, you know, as a photographer, it's not the uh, the uh, the bee's knees as far as I'm concerned, as as far as quality goes, because you know I'm so used to seeing beautiful prints, um, you know, on on photographic paper and things like that. So, seeing these images burned onto timber, yeah, it's a it's a novel thing, and I can see the attraction for people to have that uh, available to them. But certainly just understand that you know, the, the quality that you're going to get is going to be very different to what you're going to see in a photo. So uh, just take that with a grain of salt. Hopefully you've got something out of that one. And uh, again, like I said, if you have, give us a thumbs up. And um, I look forward to catching you in the next one. Um, I've got a, a pretty open week this week. So we might actually get out another uh, video around about midweek. So until the next video, make sure you be creative and stay grateful. Bye for now.